All right, let's go through the entire LED wall setup and projection mapping setup with LiveFX. First thing we have to do is make sure that our connection between the graphics card, an A6000 in this case, and the LED wall is properly set up. So this LED wall is being driven by two Brompton Tessera LED processors. Um, we have set up GenLock uh, with an AJA, uh, Gen 10, and we're feeding a 30 FPS GenLock into both processors, uh, the camera that we're using, um, the NVIDIA card via a Quadro SYNC card, and our capture card, which is an AJA Kona 5. Now, to set up our output from our main machine here, what we'll do is we'll set up an NVIDIA mosaic. So the two Brompton processors, each one driving one half of the wall over there, are being seen not as two individual processors, but as one coherent display. All right, so how do we do that? It is already set up. I'll walk you through the setup. So what you have to do to start with is right click on your desktop, fire up the NVIDIA control panel. Here we go. And then we go to the change resolution uh, tab in here where we have the two Tessera processes. Now, as you can see, both of them are set to their native resolution and set to 30 hertz. Now, the actual native resolution only allows for 60 hertz. To create this custom preset for 30 hertz, which we have shot our footage on that we're projecting to the wall and that we're recording with the camera, uh, what you have to do is create a custom preset. You can do that here in the customize setup, create custom resolution, then you get in here, you dial in your resolution, which is already set, and you dial in your refresh rate, you hit test, and eventually this will show up here as a preset, and here. You select that, you make sure it's set to 30 hertz, you do the exact same thing for the other Tesla processor, and you hit apply to have that set. So I already have this set. Next thing you do is uh, make sure that everything's synchronized. So you go to synchronize displays and you select on this system and you select the first Tessera, go to server settings, select external house sync signal, hit apply first, wait a second for it to be applied, hit yes, hit OK, select the second processor, server settings, same thing, rinse and repeat, external house sync signal, apply, Hit yes, and hit OK. So now both of these are synced together with the output from our graphics card. Now what's left to do is make those two processes appear as one big processor, two windows. To do that, we set up Mosaic. Oh yes, uh, let me quickly hit apply down here as well. That is necessary. OK, and what I confirm with yes. What I do recommend after this step is to close the control panel and reopen it because certain drop downs that we'll need in our mosaic setup might not be updated with the uh, custom preset that we just set up here uh, in, in this window. So set up mosaic, create new configuration. We're doing a one by two just like that. That's nice. Click next and now we select our two processes. We can see we selected display 2 and 3, which you can also see on the wall up there. 2 and 3, that's nice, that's what we want. And now here comes the important part. You first need to select the resolution because you can see uh, the refresh rate still shows 60 hertz and doesn't let us select anything else. So make sure you select the resolution that we configured our custom preset for because that will then in turn also offer uh, to be driven with 30 hertz. All right, we got that, hit next. Now we do our arrangement. Looking at the wall, we can see number two is on the left, number three is on the right. Let's do exactly that down here as well. All right, so here we go, number two, number three. Hit apply, and now we wait until the NVIDIA driver has configured everything to our liking. 20, 24, 25. Come on, do your thing. All right, and as you can see, we've lost our UI monitor, which is quite normal. Let me quickly confirm our setting here. Okay, hit finish, 
on the LED wall. So now we're set up with NVIDIA Mosaic on our LED wall. It's basically being seen as one big monitor. That is nice. Now we have to get our UI monitor back. To do that, we need to keep our eyes on the LED wall, go to the Windows Display Settings. And in here, as you can see, display number two is our new big virtual monitor. Uh, the two Tesla processes represent as one big display. And display number one here uh, is apparently our UI monitor. So what you can do is go to this drop down multiple displays and change it, simply change it. I'll choose extend these displays. All right, and now I'll wait a second. And my UI monitor is back. Great. So this gets us in pretty good shape to play out 30 FPS footage from our system through our NVIDIA card to both of the Brompton processes, which are being represented as one big. All right. So let's start live effects. Here we go. Enter our project. And what we now want to do is uh, create our projection setup which luckily is already created. So if I click the projection setup button here, um, I have my main stage here um, and I can edit that. So as you can see, I already have a model in here readily created, but you can create it simply yourself by hitting the create button. And in this menu, as you can see, you can type in a new name for the wall. Uh, you can even uh, choose the path where we should store the OBJ that is created from it. Uh, we set a type, wall, floor, ceiling, um, how many columns of tiles and rows of tiles we have, the tile size in meters, and also the tile resolution, and at the very end, the wall curvature, if there is any. Once created, I'll cancel out of this menu, we basically see this main curved wall. And if we go over to the Mapper tab here, we can hit the preview button and then see a preview pattern on our wall and make sure that everything is aligned perfectly. All right, back to the model tab. Uh, what's missing in here is obviously uh, the camera that will come in just a bit. Uh, and first we define where our LED wall sits uh, in relation to our world origin. Now in our case, we defined our world origin just here at the center of the LED wall, right where it sits. And in our NCAM tracking, we also uh, configured this exact offset. So we calibrated to the world origin at this exact position of the LED wall. So once we start our actual projection setup, LiveFX uh, instantly knows where the camera is in relation to the LED wall. And we also don't have to offset the LED wall in terms of XYZ position in relation to the origin point because the LED wall sits right at the origin point. So last thing to do is to activate the uh, stage up here, and then we're pretty much done. So let me close this construct, start a new projection setup. We select our stage, which we just have uh, defined. We grab a clip, this is a driving plate, drop it right in here. Uh, we tell LiveX that this is an rectangular clip, right? Um, we choose our camera tracker, which is NCAM in this case. Um, we could enable frost of highlight if we wanted to. Um, and if we were to do a set extension, we would also enable live capture and choose the incoming camera signal, which right now we sadly don't have. So let's hit create. And here we are in the player, looking at, the, uh, at a weirdly distorted video, admittedly. Uh, because the camera is right now, we're not getting any camera tracking. Uh, that is unfortunate, so let me manually move the camera back a little bit. Ooh, a very little bit. Let's put uh, four meters in here. Yeah, that looks okay. So this is our projection to the wall. And if I pan tilt the camera, or move it in Y, I can obviously have an impact on the projection, but this would all be done automatically by the camera tracking, which would be linked to our virtual camera here inside LiveFX. All right, 
uh, that's it for the uh, projection mapping. Now let's take a quick look at the lighting setup. So if I close down the stage manager here and instead open up the DMX panel. Uh, that is this. And as you can see, all the fixtures that we have up here in our uh, lighting volume uh, are mapped out here. Right now, most of them are outside the active picture. But for instance, this one, that's the one right over there. If you want to take a look, and I can basically move the sample area around and essentially drive it like a, like a low resolution display if you want. You can put the other one right next to it. You can put that here. Now I have content there as well. And this way I can basically do image-based lighting um, with it as simple as what you're seeing here, just dragging the sample boxes on the image content. Now typically you wouldn't want to sample from the image that is being sent to the LED wall because your lighting is actually in front of the LED wall. Um, so you would set up uh, a switcher node with a second channel um, showing the entire eco rectangular image and actually sample from the sides instead of from the front, which is what we're doing now. However, to get a rough impression of the lighting, um, this would work in this scenario really well. All right, that's it uh, on how to set up uh, the hardware, namely the NVIDIA Quadro card to talk to the two uh, LED processes we have here, which are driving the LED wall, projection mapping, and image-based lighting using our DMX control feature. Thanks. Tune in next time. Bye.